All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for the virtual speaker series at uh, NAF. And I'd like to uh, introduce our topic today, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workforce. And just to give you a little bit of context, NAF and Lenovo are partners, and we're very excited about our partnership with Lenovo and the fact that they're helping us bring some relevance and reality to the classroom and show what the story of the workforce looks like today, especially with all the things going on in the world. So today we're gonna to take a quick look at diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workforce. Uh, I'd like to introduce Flavia Morea, who's going to introduce the panel and we'll go ahead and get started. Please note to keep yourself on mute. We'll ask for some questions uh, toward the end and we are recording this session. So Flavia, please introduce your team. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for, for having us here. Uh, I'm thrilled uh, about this opportunity to, to connect with you. I saw the list of the attendees, folks that have registered in advance, and, I, and many of you are educators. So what I want to say is a huge thank you on behalf of our community, on behalf of Lenovo for, for the work that you've been doing. And thank you for, for being interested in, in talking to us today. So as you can see here on the slide, my job title is uh, Director of Global Diversity and Inclusion um, at Lenovo. And I'll talk to you in a moment a little bit more about Lenovo and what we do. Uh, but I like to say that we are we are beyond our titles, right? So I'm I'm a, I'm a person beyond what I do at work. I'm very proud of the work that I do, but I'm beyond uh, that, right? So I, uh, you, you might be thinking, well, you have this accent, where is she from? So I love to start by, by um, how do you say, killing that curiosity. So I'm originally from Brazil. Uh, I've been living in the US for four years, almost four and a half years now. Um, I am, uh, I live with my partner, so I'm not married, but you know, I, I'm, I'm committed. I uh, have, I'm expecting a baby right now and I have two dogs and all of my family um, is in Brazil right now. And I love, on my free time, I love talking to them, connecting with them, um, sometimes virtually, right now more virtually than, than ever. Um, what else do I do on my free time? I love learning. I think that's, that's my hobby and my passion and nowhere better to be than here today with, uh, I imagine, folks that have some of that in common with me. Uh, so who else do we have here today? So we have Jonathan Wilkins. Uh, Jonathan's job title is Supplier Diversity uh, Program Manager, and he's part of our General Procurement uh, programs organization, but I would love for him to, to also give a quick intro about who he is beyond his job title. Wow, so uh, beyond the job title. So so I, so you might ask about my accent too. I'm from North Carolina, so that's where the Southern drawl comes, comes from. Uh, so also, so it's kind of hard to separate yourself from the diversity and inclusion space, right? From your own personal who you are. So I, I do have a, um, I do work closely with Flavia um, where I lead up the US ERGs under her um, within diversity and inclusion. But I think it's such an ingrained part of who we are because that is, it's a, it's a job of passion, all right? So you, you, cannot, it's, you cannot do this job and not love what you do. And, you know, so there's some days that you might not like it, but you're gonna always love it. Um, and, and I think that's a very important beyond the work world. Um, I am married. I've uh, been married 18 years, have three boys, uh, soon to be 14 year old, a 12, and just turned three. So I have a very active household. Uh, it is nonstop uh, all the time. Uh, what I'd like to do in my, my free time. So I am a hobbyist of photography, bordering on the, the realm of professional photography. So that is something that I love to do. It is my relaxation. It is my clearing my space, uh, my headspace, and just just enjoying it in the moment. It, it allows me to, to take the world in and, and see it as, as the vision and beauty that it is. And then to be able to, to share that out with the world is, is very important to me. Thank you, Jonathan. It's so great to, you know, I know I've known you for, for several months now, and every time uh, we get to learn more about each other, right? 
Uh, next one on the slide is Michaela, Michaela Jacob. Michaela is a workstation marketing manager in our commercial marketing organization here in North America. But Michaela, I would love to learn more about you beyond your job title. Absolutely. So should we go on the theme of accents <laughs> for the rest of the time? <laughs> because I do have one. <laughs> So uh, sometimes some people will catch it, other people don't, but I too have an accent. Uh, I'm actually half African American, half South Indian, and I was actually born and raised in the UAE. So I'm kind of a, a mixture of everything. I would describe myself as a third culture kid. So for those of you that don't know what that term means, it's essentially calling a place home when it's not necessarily of your own ethnicity. So like I said, biracial, but neither of my parents are actually Emirati. So I'm a third culture kid, a little bit about myself. I love to dance. <laughs> it's a stress reliever <laughs> in so many ways. I enjoy in itself. Um, so I love to dance, I love to cook as well. The household I grew up in and the country I grew up in, it's a, a mixture of fusion. So I've kind of taken that and I love to entertain friends and just have them over for food. I'm a twin to a boy which many people actually don't know. He stole the, my height though. I'm 5'2 and he's like six feet. So there's that. And yeah, I don't have a dog or kids or a spouse, but just thriving by myself in COVID. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you. Uh, Jessica, Jessica Mara is our, and here, here am I, Jessica, pronouncing your name with my accent, Mara. I don't know if that's correct. I should have checked. Uh, she's a senior manager in our global e-commerce um, incubation community and new business models organization. It, this is a, a, a mouthful. That's how you say a huge title. So tell us a little bit more about you beyond your title uh, but also I think it would be helpful if you could tell a little about about the title as well yeah absolutely thanks Flavia um nice to meet everyone uh so yes we actually said we're incubating new business models um I'll put it kind of all together in a sentence for you so we're incubating new business models one of them that we're launching with this community under the e-commerce global e-commerce um part of the work um, and I actually um, work with, in our education division. So we are growing different types of um, business models, also strategies, we are executing on them. Um, and again, the first one is we'll be launching a Lenovo EDU uh, student community uh, on Monday uh, in both in the US, in the UK, and in Australia as a fast follow the following week. Um, who I am outside of the job? Uh, so I am a mom of two children. Um, my daughter will be 18 on Friday. Um, she's a senior in high school and will be going to college next year. Um, my son is 12 um, and he is uh, just so easy and phenomenal. I will say, I just adore him. You know, he's still in that phase and I'm taking every minute of it that I can. Um, and I have a really supportive and absolutely fantastic partner um, and we will be engaged soon. So <laughs> um, sharing that at a very, you know, it's like a low risk here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we, and we have a dog and we have a cat. So it's a very, uh, a very simple life right now. I did spend a lot of time traveling um, before this position with Lenovo and also before uh, COVID-19 hit. So it's been quite an adjustment to be home all the time. Um, I do also have an interior design business on the side um, and I, um, and an adjunct professor at UNC um, in their Masters of Education, Innovation, um, Technology, and Entrepreneurship. It's also, it's MIGHTY is the acronym, and it's also a mouthful, so that's where I end up landing, usually. Um, and I'm also, I came out, um, my, my contribution to this discussion today um, and is that I came out uh, in my mid-30s, so um, it's quite an experience to come out as an adult and um, to really shift my life completely and own my freedom. And so that has been, um, you know, definitely something that I've had to adjust to in my uh, professional life as well. Thank you so much, Jessica. It's, it's a 
it's a, an honor to have you and Jonathan and Michaela with us today and, and hopefully the, the audience will enjoy. So what we are planning for, for everybody here today is really an informal conversation. And Kevin, we can go to, to the next slide. Actually, yeah, you can even jump one because this is just a title. Uh, but what, what, what are we planning for today is really an informal conversation. Hopefully you will have the chance to, to interact, ask your questions, and, and we'll do our best to answer uh, with our personal perspective, but also our Lenovo experience. What we thought we would cover before uh, opening up the panel and the conversation itself are those two boxes. One is really, what is Lenovo, right? Because we hear about the company and and we hope you heard about the company before, uh, but you may not know exactly in which business we are, what we, we're doing. So I just wanted to bring that up uh, real quick and then try to define such a difficult topic as diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? I love the way the panel has introduced themselves because it's going to help us see diversity in action. But I'll, I'll show uh, some of that and, and hopefully it will warm us up for a great conversation on the panel. We've prepared some questions for them already. We also got one question in advance that we are gonna, gonna ask, but please type your questions and, and uh, participate. That's, that's for you, okay? So if we go to the next slide real quick, I just wanted to, to talk to you a little bit about what is Lenovo, right? So in this picture here, you can see to the left, this little house and it says since 1984. It really is when our company was uh, started or, or, or founded over 30 years ago uh, in China. Uh, and it was a small team of 11 engineers that founded the company um, at that time. Then after so many years, uh, our company actually changed the name to Lenovo, uh, acquired several business across the globe. And today we, we define ourselves as a diverse group of, of, of forward thinkers and innovators in more than 180 markets, uh, constantly reimagining technology to make the world more interesting and to solve such, uh, tough, global challenges. So that's our mission as an organization and, and as a team. Then on the next slide, it's a bunch of uh, acronyms. I'm not going to spend too much time here. I don't want you all to, to run away. But I just wanted to show that we have multiple businesses, right? The brand Lenovo is, is known, but we have multiple businesses. So the, uh, at the core of what we do, we have two big businesses. One is the intelligent devices group, which, which starts with our PCs, our laptop computers, our cell phones, Motorola cell phones, and, and many other intelligent devices. And then we have the data center group. Uh, th these are our core business. Then we have our transformation businesses that help us transform the industry and transform ourselves as, as, as an organization. And here, here are the cool names that I'm still learning because I've been with Lenovo for uh, eight or nine months now, I wanna say. So commercial internet of things, and uh, data intelligence business group. So these are different offers that we, we, we offer to our customers and we are evolving in that space. And then we have the investment part, which is all of our capital and incubator investment organizations, brand new ones, startups that we invest on. So that's, that's a little bit about Lenovo. And I think uh, on the next slide, I'm gonna spend like three seconds just to show you our footprint we are around the world. The cool thing about this one, I should have mentioned earlier, is that Lenovo has two headquarters. And, and this was one thing that attracted me to the company. We, many, many companies say we're global, they're global. But what I love about Lenovo is we really are, our leadership is in two different parts of the world. So we have a headquarter in China and one in, in the US here in North Carolina in, in Morrisville in the RTP area. Uh, and multiple other organ organizations across the globe. Then on the next one, that's where the thing starts to get super interesting from a diversity and inclusion perspective. Our, our vision is to enable smarter technology for all. That's, that's Lenovo's vision. 
uh, whether it's through the devices, the services, and everything that we will offer. But a smarter technology enables all kinds of people in all kinds of places to do all kinds of powerful things. If we're going to solve the great challenges of today and build a smarter tomorrow, we need all kinds of point of views to make all kinds of progress. And it's, it's um, uh, rhetorical, but I really, I flag this all kinds because to me that connects us to the next slide and the reason why we are here today, which is to talk about diversity. Diversity really is bringing everybody to the table and understanding that everybody is unique, everybody is different. Uh, it really is a global mindset for the society and the workforce today. And we at Lenovo, we celebrate differences and similarities. We are looking for similarities because we know we all have many as my colleagues were presenting. I was like, oh yeah, that, that's something I, I believe too. But I also noticed, oh, there are some differences here and we celebrate that because uh, that's, that's where we see the power um, happening. And then I mentioned to you earlier that I wanted to, to go back to the introductions. And I'll take my example um, because I haven't asked the, the other panelists for that, but I will ask you to think about yourself now. So when, when we think about us, we start at the core, right? Our personality, things that, we, that are very close to, to our heart. But then you have some dimensions that are more internal. What is, what is my gender? What is my sexual orientation? What is my level of physical ability? What is my ethnicity, my race, my age? So if you look at me, you might have seen me here and you're like, oh, I, she looks like a woman. I'm not sure. But then I introduce myself. I'm like, yeah, I didn't say that, but I could have said I'm a woman uh, and I'm from Brazil. So I'm Latina. So you start getting a little bit more into to my, my self, my, my whole self. And that's what diversity is about, right? Accepting and embracing everybody as unique as they are and as special as they are. It's easier said than done, right? Because uh, we are all humans and institutions are, are made of humans. So that's why we need to go to the next slide when we talk about inclusion. Right, so we say, okay, let's bring everybody to the table. Let's have a diverse uh, organization, a diverse uh, business. But how can we really take action to make sure everybody belongs or, or have the sense and feel they belong, feel they're accepted and feel there is equality for all of them. So that's the concept of inclusion. That's how we follow it at Lenovo. I love the picture to the right. Is where you see all the colors really included, not just integrated in a silo, but really included. And that's what we would like to talk to you about today. And then last but not least, uh, the concept of equality. So equity versus equality, uh, right? So we talk a lot about equality and, and in my per personal experience coming to the United States has been uh, a life example of how equality is important, right? People have to have the rights uh, to, to, to have access to things. That's, to me, that's a, a societal value that I'm still learning about uh, the United States, but I think it's, it's a very important one. But we want to go beyond that. We want to talk about equity, which is providing every individual with what they need, right? Not necessarily the same for everybody, but what each one needs. Uh, the other day I heard this analogy and I thought it was perfect. Equity is, equality is, okay, everybody needs shoes, Everybody will have shoes and I don't care about the size. Everybody gets the same size, the same color, the same um, brand, the same quality of shoes. When it comes to equity is what you see on the picture here. Well, somebody may need smaller shoes. Somebody may need larger shoes. Somebody may need hiking shoes, right? And that's the, the conversation we are having. The challenge to get to that, I mean, there are many challenges to get to that, but I think, uh, a key one is because we as individuals usually come from our perspective 
when we are making decisions, when we are interacting with others, we come from our lens, right? So what we are trying to do at Lenovo, and I would love to invite you to do whatever you are today, is to open up for different perspectives. So one example is, is on the next slide is what we've been doing at Lenovo with uh, testing all of our devices. So this was um, an example when we were developing uh, one of our headsets for, for AR, augmented reality, we realized, well, we are not testing that with a diverse range of people. Uh, how about people who have smaller heads, bigger heads, who have uh, hair, um, thicker hair, have no hair. So that's a clear example that we've been looking into and there are many others. So whenever you're making a decision, it's important to, to think about that. Uh, two more slides, I promise. I feel like I'm talking a lot. Uh, the next one is very, very powerful and it, it is about the power of inclusion and, and that's um, what I would like to invite each one of you today to think about. Because we are humans, and because we come from our own perspectives, what tends to happen is we tend to group and make decisions and partner with folks that we think we have things in common, right? So we will include those individuals that are kind of, you know, like us, like-minded, the same tribe. And what happens is unintentionally, we're excluding other people. So if you do not intentionally think about including other views, other perspectives, I'm sorry, you will unintentionally exclude. So, it's, so I invite you to think about inclusion as a habit uh, for you to do every day, the same way you brush your teeth, I hope, every day. Uh, think about inclusion every day in everything we do. Um, it's very tough, but it's possible. Uh, and then the very last one uh, is about biases, right? I hope you've heard this concept of bias, unconscious bias, implicit bias. And I thought, you know, I, no, I'm super open. You know, I'm always interested in new cultures. I don't have biases. And over time, what I've learned is, well, I have a brain. Hence, I have a bias because this helps has helped me um, function, right? Our, our brains are wired, <clears throat> excuse me, to protect us and to reduce the amount of decisions we have to make in a day. So we leverage our bias, our preconceptions uh, to, to go quicker. The challenge is, in most cases, when we leverage those biases, we are excluding and we are missing a lot of opportunities. So that's uh, that's what I had for you today. And I lied, I think there's one more slide if you go, next one. I love this quote. So I want to leave you with this message before I open uh, to our panelists. You know, it's so important for us to be ourselves because everybody else is taken. So the, the power of diversity is there what each one of us brings and can contribute it as, as is unique and, and nobody can take it from us. Okay. All right. So let me check with Kevin. How are we doing? Are we okay to go to the questions that we had pre? Go. Let's go ahead and ask the questions and then uh, I'll give you a heads up when we're ready to ask the final one and, uh, and see questions from our audience. Perfect. Yeah, so I think the first burning one that I would love to have each one of our panelists uh, answer is like, how important is this conversation to you? How important is diversity to you? Um, and, and yeah, I'll leave it open like this and then you can bring it up, bring it to life in different areas of your life at Lenovo, beyond Lenovo. How, is, how important is it uh, for each one of you? Jonathan, how about we start with you? All right, so I'll go ahead and jump on in. Um, welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. So from my perspective, diversity is, is, is very important, right? Because from an, an African-American perspective, uh, it is something that we have to think about every time we walk in a room because, or um, I'm invited to a meeting or I'm meeting with friends when I'm out. So that diversity 
uh, kind of leads everything that I do because there have been often times where I've been the only minority in the room. I've been, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the one and only, right? So, which is, which is, which has its positive and negatives uh, to go along with that. But that is the, the thing that kind of leads. So diversity is, to me, not only is like Flavia said, it's not just the things that you can see physically about a person, but um, I'm someone who is also very interested in how people grew up and, you know, who they are or what decisions or what things shape them to become the person that they are. And I think that that is vitally important to the diversity conversation because we do come from, as you can see there, there are um, a, a array of ethnicities that are identified on the panel. And not only that, but cultural differences because the different places that we grew up and those help shape who we are. And those things are, are something that I that I am very curious about, that I always like to learn um, and try to pick people's brains to, to try to find out like, what makes you tick? Like, how, how did you become the person that you are? Thank you, Jonathan. And you made me think, you mentioned curiosity and you made me think about a, an important aspect here, right? It, diversity and inclusion are about being curious and being appreciative to the difference, right? It's not about, oh, Jonathan is different than me. It's good or bad. He is more this or less that than me. But it's about, it's different. Huh, interesting. Let me understand. And trying to do this from a place of no judgment, right? And it's a challenge. Uh, Oh, oops, I muted myself. Jessica, can I go to you next? Uh, sure. Um, so diversity to me um, and why I think it's important in this conversation overall is that um, I think, you know, when you only have people who come from similar experiences, um, you really don't get an entire um, view of how, um, how we can all work together and really what that means. Like, you know, there are statistics that are behind it that say the more diverse an incubating group is, the better the business will become. Um, I fully believe that. I don't know those statistics, but I can tell you I've seen that in action many times. And I know that as someone who was looking to join Lenovo um, and is only six months in, it was extremely important to me that the company be diverse. Um, and so I'm happy to see that uh, not only is it um, part of the overall structure of the organization, um, there's not just a talk the talk, there's a walk the walk. Um, and that is a huge component. So um, I would say that those are kind of my two main things as far as what diversity means in this conversation. Thank you, Jessica. Very, very powerful. And I think if I think about our audience here, educators and students, as you're thinking about where you want to go uh, in your career, organizations that you want to join and uh, part of what you want to be, right? Think about that, um, assess organizations, ask whoever is willing to hire you for a job or, or for any kind of a partnership. How, how is their mindset around DNI? Because you, know, you, you have um, power in your hands to make a decision informed on that. Uh, how about to you, Michaela? Yeah, so for myself, I mean, the, the quote that you actually have up on this slide is super powerful. I think more powerful than we, we give the quote. I, we, we see it often, we probably hear it often, but it resonates very deeply with me and it kind of touches on what Jonathan had shared. For me, diversity is super important because in a lot of ways, that's my identity. You know, that it's a part of what shaped me to be who I am today. And who I am outside of work, I do bring elements of that to work and my employers should acknowledge that of me and the value that I bring to the table. So I think a really important part outside of the different criteria that we might fall under is our diversity of thought, which is something that was brought up to me very recently. And the more I think about it, I just can't help but think, again, it's one of those things we, we hear often, but have we delved into it enough to really understand what what does diversity of thought really mean? Like when you come into a room, if someone looks similar to you or has a similar criteria that they fall under, do you still think the same? 
probably not and it's not a bad thing but to your point it's so important to take that into consideration because when you talk about coming to work i mean let's be real it's called a nine to five that means majority of your day is spent at work it's basically your second home and so you want to feel comfortable and you want to know that people are understanding you when you walk into a room and not having these biases that you just talked about or having these preconceived notions of what you are bringing to the table in all actuality. It could be that, but much more too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Very powerful. Now, let's be, let's be honest here. It's not always that nice, right? It's not everybody we will encounter will be... Um, mindful of um, the value of diversity or will be inclusive and we know there are some things some practices that are, that are even institutionalized so i would love to hear from you and it doesn't have to be from everybody uh, but can you share with us examples one example of a situation where you you have not seen dni diversity and inclusion being valued or you felt you were not being included for some reason. Uh, and let's try to, to add a positive note to that by saying, how have you handled the situation? I know it's a tough one. It is, that's, that's a tough one. Um, so, so I guess, you know, at, at, like I said, from the African-American perspective, you know, we, we have historically grown up in a, in a culture in the US where exclusion was a part of the process um, from the, the time slavery ended through reconstruction and then on into Jim Crow. So those, those were very difficult time periods. And I, and I recognize that I was on the end of, of the civil rights movement born, I'll give you my age. I was born in 1975. So, you know, I was on, I was on the end of that. So my, my mom, my mom, my aunts, um, my uncles, they were the ones who integrated their high school. They were the first black class that they integrated, right? So, so you know, we talk, we think about uh, it being so long ago, and it's not, it, it really wasn't. Uh, so it was, you know, a, a, a stone's throw away. It was less than 50, 60 years ago. So we're talking about a time period there. Um, but so, so it is a, it's a difficult thing. I think, I think in my life, you know, especially through the educational process, um, I have been, I have been in, when I was in high school, I had a pretty good GPA. You know, we were, we were uh, pretty smart kids. Like I, I, <laughs> I tell you out of a class of 564, I went to Inlo uh, that is located in Raleigh. Um, so I was 100 in my class and I had a three, six GPA. And this was before the time of, you know, 4.5s and 5.0s. It was a 4.0 scale. That's all we had back in the day, kids. So yeah, it wasn't all this extra stuff that you guys have now, right? Um, and I was literally sitting in the guidance counselor's office and we were talking about career paths and what I wanted to do. And I told her I wanted to go to NC State uh, to pursue a degree in engineering. Um, now I'd all taken all the prerequisites and she literally told me, um, maybe you should think about another major. I, I don't think you can, can handle engineering. I said, well, sorry, I don't know what you think. <laughs> and, I, and I guess I have always been that type of person. Like, I, like, as soon as you tell me I can't do something, it's the thing that I set out to show you that I am going to do. Um, I did receive my degree from civil engineering from North Carolina State University. Uh, so I, I, just, I just put that in your mind. Like, there are always going to be people who are against you that are going to throw stumbling blocks in your way. And you, I look at that as motivation. Right, like, like I, I, I literally had had a um, a buddy uh, who he was a doctor, and he was he had an argument with one of the patients about them wanting to be seen immediately, and he used the best line that I that I still remember to this day, and he says he was I think he was 50 at the time, and he said I want to dunk a basketball again, but that's not going to happen either, right? And so he he put a positive spin on it to say, look. There are things that we want, the things that we can do that we can control, and there's things that we can't. But what's in our ability that we can do and we can control? Let's make the best out of it, and let's let's make every situation uh, to be a positive that look to be a negative, but we can make it into a positive to work out for our good. Beautiful. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. That's so powerful. 
anybody else would like to share a situation where they they've experienced exclusion Yeah, while, while folks are warm up, I think I want to I want to share a little bit more about my experience. So, um, I even though I didn't grow up in a in a very wealthy uh, background, I have to say in Brazil we are a pretty diverse uh, country. We do have a lot of racism. Almost half of our population is uh, from from African descent. Uh, but unfortunately, they do not have the same access because of the same historical reasons that Jonathan said. But I was privileged. I was born, uh, as people see myself as white, right? But then coming to the U.S., I had to experience um, a different, a different view. Being, being the difference, being having an accent, being. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Five minutes. Being. Um, uh, um, you know, a minority, and um, what? And I've, I'm not going to share a lot of examples, but I've heard different things similar to what Jonathan said. You can't do that because of your background. You need to um, it, you need to um, learn this, learn more about the U.S., which is which is fair. But I think what I've what I've decided to do was really to value the fact that I'm different, the fact that I'm a minority here, the fact, and once, once I heard, you are the standout, I thought I was the minority. Now I, I realize I'm the standout. Today I'm not the standout because Michaela also have an ac has an accent and Jonathan also has an accent, but typically I'm the only one with an accent and then people are curious. So, so I chose to, to accept that I'm different and, and that makes me stand out. Um, anybody else want to share uh, the same the same answer to that question where inclusion was not valued? Okay, so I have another one for you, uh, and and that's a question that I have for myself. In many cases, a lot of that is in our minds, right? Um, a lot of that sense of exclusion or not being valued or not belonging is in our minds. Um, in many cases it, is, is, it isn't, but what do we do when it's more of a blocker that we are creating for ourselves um, to, to be perceived as included or not? Anybody has a, has a tip on that? Yeah, I, I think when you perceive yourself in a certain way where it's stopping you from either um, taking advantage of an opportunity that was presented to you or even being able to share out in a meeting where people have actually asked you to share your input, I think it's valuable for you to take a step back and just write what it is that you bring to the table. Really look at the facts that you know are true about yourself, but you seem to be doubting for some reason, really marinate on those words as well. Don't just write them out and say, you know, I've heard Bob say this about me and Sally say that about me. And, and let me just jot that down. Like really sit there by yourself with a pen and paper and ask yourself, why am I different? How am I different? How, what value do all these different aspects about myself bring to the table? And really process that and then accept it and understand that all of this is good. To your point, you know, we're all unique and we should embrace the differences that we come to the table with. So when you write each word, I would highly recommend that you sit there, even if it's like in a field of grass, just be one with yourself and just really accept those words that you, you share with yourself and be proud of those words too. Fantastic, thank you, Michaela. Uh, now let's go out, out, out from our hearts and come back to our heads. I would love to know uh, from you, how, what have you seen companies like Lenovo uh, doing to, to increase, promote equity, diversity, and inclusion, but not only with their employees, but with the community? students, schools, other businesses? What have you seen uh, happening that are good practices? Well, in, in, this, in this environment, uh, the civil unrest after the murder of George Floyd, 
um, it has been a huge, huge momentum swing towards the inequities I think many of us in the minority community face. Um, I've seen all corporations, especially all large corporations, step up, uh, put their the money where their mouth is, and start to invest in educational programs. Um, but let me let me speak very specific for Lenovo because I, what everybody else is doing, they are they're doing an amazing job. But let me tell you, Lenovo is is stand out in this. And and I I I there were many days that I think I told Flavia that I am proud to be a Lenovo employee. Um, we have stepped up. So as a supply diversity manager, uh, my job is to increase our utilization of minority businesses and to have them compete for more contracts internally. We've put our, we've put our, well, our commitment to increase that utilization. We're funding organizations who support minority businesses. Our employees actually did a matching campaign through our Lenovo Cares where we gave out of our own paychecks uh, contributions that went into a a pool, whether it be for HBCUs to uh, minority development councils, uh, just just to give you an idea, and Lenovo matched those funds too. Uh, so in the, in the beginning, it was a five to one match, which was huge and unheard of, never been done before, and now it's moved back to the one to one match. So every dollar we get, they match it a dollar. Um, we have given over seventy thousand dollars to to historically black colleges and universities. Uh, so we are still doing that. Uh, we, North Carolina a and and North Carolina Central lead the way where we've given to them over $57,000 to them individually. Um, we're giving to national organizations. Uh, we're contributing not only out of our own pockets for that, like I said, but a company has pledged to support these initiatives and the growth of these, these organizations as well. So I, I'm, I'm truly inspired and truly pleased. Uh, we've done courageous conversations training. We, got, we have, have uh, we're doing things like this for month of service. We, we, we have stepped up and, and it is no better time to, to give Lenovo a round of applause and to, to say thank you to them for what, they, what they've done. Thank you, Jonathan. And, and what I would compliment to what you said is companies like Lenovo and others, and we had this question here on purpose, they do that because, you know, they're great companies and, and, and all the good stuff. But in fact, they have to do that because they have a responsibility, right? You've seen our footprint. You've seen where we are and, 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 and we're part of those communities. So we have a responsibility to make a difference. So that's the first thing. The second thing is our employees want us to have that responsibility and, and we won't be able to attract talent like you all on the call if we don't do that. So keep an eye on what companies are doing because they have a role to play. We have a role to play and, and um, you can influence that by by deciding to buy products from those companies or by deciding to to join those organizations all right so we are ready for questions from from everybody so please put them uh, in the chat we did get one in advance and one of our panelists has kindly agreed to to respond to that question and the question is as the new employee joining Lenovo or any company, do you have to say anything, for example, if you're gay or bi? Uh, and then um, one of our panelists has agreed to share and, and hopefully she'll be able to share a little bit of, of her experience as well. Uh, so my dear, can I, can I hand it over to you, Jessica? Absolutely, thanks, Flavia. Um, so, you know, we, we all know, I think, or if you don't know, um, you know, in just June 15th of this year, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court decided to uphold um, and extend Title VII to protect um, both sexual orientation and uh, gender identity. And that's a huge momentous act. And the reason for that is because even though five years ago the Marriage Equality Act was passed, um, it was still legal to fire someone for being gay in 27 states in the U.S. until this past June 15th. Um, and uh, as someone who is was looking for employment and deciding where I was going to be employed, I have avoided a state that I live in um, because it was one of those 27 
for many years and decided to make the leap. And one of the main reasons that I chose Lenovo was because they explicitly say that sexual orientation is not one of the areas that matters for your qualification for position. And so that was really huge. Um, I will say to you that, um, you know, because I am femme or because life is what it is, I actually have to continually come out all the time. Even being on this panel is a big deal. Um, but I do feel as a woman who is very close to Jonathan's age <laughs> that it is, um, it is my responsibility to an obligation to everyone who is younger and specifically all of you as students um, to say that you should be who you are. Um, Flavio reminded me of that today and I appreciate that. Um, and let me give you an example of why it kind of matters, not only from a big perspective of will I be fired or will I be, get this position based on who you love, um, but also it's because there are little nuances um, where, uh, for example, um, I'm on a very small team and everyone talks about their spouse. And so uh, with women, it's very much about their husbands and um, and I pause before entering the conversation, even though what I may have to say will be relevant, because I know that then it outs me, right? Um, and so there's a continual part of, and then there's questions that always come up. I inevitably and always ask, um, will you have children? How, you know, there's questions that are asked that are actually a little bit outside of the work environment. So um, I know that Flavia is going to speak to the actual policy on whether or not you have to say anything. I will say to you, um, personally, it's my understanding you do not ever have to disclose that information. Um, but I will also encourage you to find a fit of the right organization for you on a multitude of levels, but this being one of them, um, in making sure that it matches who you are um, and where you, where you fall into the equation. Um, and I think, you know, specifically because uh, we don't know exactly where things will change or if they'll change, hopefully they will not. Um, but if they do, um, I think it's really important to feel that psychological protection in the company in which you work. Um, it, I did a lot of reading about it over the past few years and I feel it all the time. And so I think that that's genuinely important. Thank you so much, Jessica. I don't think I have, not, I don't think I have anything to add the the way you've put it it's so powerful and and indeed for lenovo you don't have to uh, share any of your uh, identity information but we encourage you to be yourself um, so that's that's a lenovo practice but i think your your personal experience was so powerful that i i'm not going to add anything thank you so I'm looking here at the chat, Kevin. Did we get any questions so far? We have, we have not gotten any questions so far. So I, oh, we do. Here we go. So can you speak on diversity of age? How can students who will be starting in their first job slash internships feel empowered when they are the youngest in the room? Hmm. Anybody take that? Yeah, please. So um, I'll share a quick personal experience and then share why you should feel empowered. So when I first received this role, I was the only female on the team, uh, not on my marketing team, but the supporting team. I, I support the workstation business. And I was the only female, the youngest at that, the only person of color <laughs> to top it off. Let's just keep adding the layers. And um, I remember I, I attended a meeting that it was a standard cadence with my leadership team and we have a great relationship, but I think I might have caught one of them on a bad day. And they called me out and said, the reason why we had you join this team is because you're young and we expect you to bring all these different perspectives. And I just sat there in the meeting like, what? <laughs> How did it just go left field? And I, frankly speaking, I was speechless. I didn't know how to respond to it. Uh, being younger, obviously, you know, Flavie, you talked about having these perceptions about yourself. I thought, well, I don't want to say anything that might jeopardize my next step in my career. I don't want to come off as, you know, there's this stereotype about people of color. They're very loud. I'm like, I don't want to be perceived as that either. So I had this internal conflict with myself and in short, stayed quiet in that meeting. I wanted to be respectful. They are part of the leadership team. So I, I, I handled that offline with them. 
But um, in conclusion, I ended up going back to them and sharing, you know, my age, my color, all of that is important, but we kind of talked about this before. Don't have a preconceived notion of who I am. Let me bring myself to the table and take me for who I am. And so that was a moment of empowerment. Yes, I was the youngest person of color, <laughs> female, but I kind of took that all in and I, I talked about that exercise. I really just self-reflected and that said, I'm not about to have someone tell me who I should be. I need to be who I am because I know exactly what I bring to the table. I know why I got this role to begin with, to even support your, your business. So with that, I kind of came back to the table, shared that with that respective individual. And if anything, our relationship is so much better now. We're much closer. I've been working, I have been working closely with them for two years now. And I have no issues with that, that situation. I think if anything, it was a growing up opportunity for me to, to really embrace myself and then hold my ground as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michaela. So powerful. While the questions uh, keep coming, you made me think about something else. So uh, at Lenovo, one thing that we recently implemented and are rolling out outside of the U.S. globally is the concept of courageous conversations, right? If you see something, feel empowered to say something. Or as a leader, how can you open up the space for courageous conversations around diversity and inclusion. So my question to you, I think it's gonna be very helpful for our educators here on the call. So if you are an educator uh, and you want to create that space of courageous conversations where people feel comfortable that they can talk about diversity and inclusion, uh, but you also face the challenge of polarization, or uh, the barrier of being politically correct or not doing the right thing. What advice would you, Jonathan, Jessica, and Michaela give to those uh, educators on the line that would like to, to start having more meaningful and courageous conversations uh, in, with their students and even in their personal lives? So uh, I would say to proceed all conversations in love. I think that is the, the key to it. Like you, you have to go in with a, a loving mindset that you, and, and what probably have the toughest job in the world, right? And, and very respectful of that. Like I, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't think you do the job without love being at the forefront of it. Uh, you love your kids, you love what you do, you love the interaction, you love to see them grow. And this is another, just a part of their development. And if you can proceed those conversations with that same intention and, and get your students to understand like, hey, this is a safe place where we can talk about and discuss things openly, but respectfully. All right, let's not bring in the negative atmosphere on it or um, uh, something that I, that I learned from, from a, a friend that's a counselor. Um, one of the best ways to understand someone is, um, I feel we fix. So I feel a certain way about something, but we as the unit have to fix it together. So it doesn't say, I'm not going to come in and say, no, you did this is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. We have to lead with the, the thought process of this is how I feel. It is not resounding on anyone else but we can come together and we can fix this together. And I think that that is all encompassed in the love aspect of it. Thank so, you, Jonathan. Jessica? I would say um, definitely the empathy aspect is incredibly important. I think also the slide that you've provided, Flavia, on um, everyone talking about their inherent biases is extremely important. Um, I would also provide all students with a list of, of different books different resources, anything that they can educate themselves on and really take that as a priority to be their own educator and then come to the conversation with an educated view too, or meet them where they are first and then have them educate themselves and come back to the conversation and continually have it. Um, 
And I think that's important. I did want to go back really quickly, just for one second, back to the age conversation. And I wanted to say this, which I love that Michaela gave her perspective as someone who joined a team that she was clearly extremely qualified for, but also wanted to make sure that she had a voice in it. Um, I do work with a lot of graduate students um, as well as I've been in the business of education for the past 20 years. Um, I would just also caution um, because I think we are in a very unique moment in the fact that we have four generations uh, working together um, in the workforce and that is huge. It has not happened before and I think it's extremely important to be um, mindful of everyone and which age group they're coming from and what experience they might bring to the table. All of your voices as you join your new experiences, whether it's an internship or your first job or your first career job or whatever that looks like for you or your volunteer jobs, your aspect and your point of view is extremely crucial or you would not have been brought on. The flip side to that is you need to be patient sometimes. Sometimes it may take you a minute to build up the years of experience that some of your colleagues have had for 10, 20, 30, and sometimes 40 years um, prior. And not to say that their opinion is the only one that should be heard or that their voice should be the loudest, but really do tap into the mentorship that they can give you and help you along the way in your journey. Um, and, and know that your voice is valuable, but be patient. Um, I've worked on teams with, um, with much younger people for a long time, and they always want to move to the next step very quickly, and I was just like that, so I get it. So, I, so please, I understand, very empathetic to that. Um, but be patient, learn as much as you can, and when you are ready to move to that next step, come with a very clear business case. <laughs> Um, not from a place of entitlement or I want, but a place of how can your skill set be brought to the table to bring you to the next level and what will that mean to the overall business and the team. Thank you so much, Jessica. And I feel like you might have read the question that came up right when you were talking. That was exactly that. What advice would you provide to young adults 18 to 25 when they're at entry level positions and they don't feel empowered? So sometimes, uh, and I loved how this person put it here, the errands kid, right? They, they're dele they, people delegate um, um, uh, activities to them and they feel like, well, I could add so much more. So what I heard from your response is in yes, indeed. Uh, and be patient and, and come with that business case and say, well, here's what I can add. Here's, here's what you are going to gain, uh, uh, you as an organization, you as a leader. And I hear I think this it works one, for all of us, not just for the young uh, talent. It does. But I hear this one a lot. Like, why am I getting coffee for the team if I was put in this internship because I have this degree? Hey, I get it. But if you're not doing it, someone else will be. And the reason you've been asked to do it is because they trust that you're responsible. Every time you're asked to do a task for the team, I would try to reframe it. I would also um, really focus on the tasks you're being asked to do that have more of a relevance to your degree. And let this kind of give this one more weight, less weight. Give it less, give it less of a, a voice right in your own head get the coffee, get the drinks, order the lunch, do the things. Because that skill, whether you, I have been on teams where the top executives do those roles. And I've been in other companies where it's very hierarchical and it is delegated out. Also listen, when you bring the coffee back, what's the conversation that's being had? What is the meeting about that you're actually ordering the lunch for? Why are they sitting in? What is that about? Take every opportunity as a learning experience, not just as a transaction. You have tremendous value, but you have to start somewhere. Everyone does. And I can tell you that I'm much older than that. And every time you start a new job, you have to kind of start over. I have been asked to take notes in meetings over the past six months. I haven't done that for 15 years. So you just kind of go with it. You let it go, you take the notes, you get the drinks, you order the lunch, you do whatever it is, and you learn wherever you can. Thank you, Jessica, very powerful. So you're at time, Kevin is, is reminding us of that. So first of all, thank you so much. I love this uh, slide here, different is better for Lenovo and for all of us. 
Um, I hope you had a great session, you enjoyed, and do count on us uh, in the future. We are, we are thrilled to, to have this opportunity to be here. Uh, Kevin, I'll hand it over to you. I'd love to close it out on behalf of NAF. Thank you so much to all the panelists, the questions and the answers are greatly appreciated. Uh, I really appreciated the comments about student voice and when to speak up and that they need to think about those things and really appreciate that because that's one of the, the skills that our students need is, is when is that moment? When do they see that uh, activity? When do they speak up? When do they make those decisions? So very, very good. We have recorded this session. We will uh, put this uh, out for the NAF academies to view later on. And we also put in jot form for your evaluation and I've been receiving some of those. So greatly appreciate the time. Uh, you're a great set of, set of panelists and we really appreciate your sharing with our NAF students. Uh, have a wonderful day and Joe Sadie, you can hit the end and we'll wave goodbye to everybody and say thank you everyone thank you so much for attending and have a super super day bye 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 now